Hey, hey, good morning. We are back in Whitby, Ontario. Back to the land of the wildest winter we've ever seen. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We're about to get started here for um, our regularly scheduled move sessions. 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings, Eastern. I don't know, are we on standard or daylight savings time? I can never, I never know which one we're on. But anyway, we're on Eastern time, so... <laughs> Whatever we're at Eastern time in May, that, sorry, March, we're not at May. I, my mind is in May. I'm like living in May right now because my race is coming up, my retreat is coming up, and I'm doing all the things for May. <laughs> and I'm skipping over, and I keep forgetting, I got a whole April month coming up before we get to May. <laughs> all right, let's start with some gentle, easy twists. I did not run this morning. Today is my rest and recovery day. So I may take a little easier than usual in here. We are in the home stretch, the crunch time, the final weeks leading into the Cocodona 250. 42 days, I think I have. Uh, yeah, I probably start seven weeks from yesterday. So seven weeks sounds like a long time, but it's not a lot of time. It's gonna take off two weeks for uh, tapering and recovery. And so really I have five, five weeks from yesterday to put in um, the final touches on my training and preparation for the Cocodona 250. And I tweaked my hip the other day. So I have not had any kind of, we're not gonna use the I word, cause I don't think it's an injury. I think it's fine. I did the smart thing yesterday and I did not run, but I did hike. I did a 20 kilometer hike to finish off my four day training block, my four day, training block um, starting Friday was to do four 20 kilometer runs. So I don't know, that's probably about 12, 12 and a half miles. Doesn't sound like very far when I change it to miles um, a day for four days. Um, and then the idea was I was gonna rest, do some core, do some strength training, and then head into my next block Thursday or Friday of this week, which will be four 30 kilometers. And anyway, so day three, I don't know, I felt it right at the beginning of my run, my hip, my glute, my hamstring, I don't know, something did not feel good. It bothered me the whole run. And by the end of the run, I was like, I probably shouldn't have run through that one, but I did. And I got the third 20K in. And then when I went to do my fourth day, the question became, well, I, I know, I knew I shouldn't run. The question became, should I, Sorry, I gotta fix my sock here. I'm getting a text that I can't read. Anyway, I'll, I'll read that later. Um, where, where was I? Do I take a rest day? Do I do, I do some stretch? So here, here's a philosophy that I share with you that I learned over the last you know, few years as I become a more mature <laughs> athlete right, mature, not by age, but by mindset, is that, and this is a philosophy for life, you guys. This is a philosophy um, that can help in any situation where you're trying to, where you're trying to determine, like, do I do the thing, and, and there's all these voices in your head, there's all these um, thoughts encouraging you not to do it, warning you not to do it, um, feeding into your fears, not, not to do it, right? You know, trying to shut you down. And there's certainly a time when those voices are completely reasonable and of sound, you know, logic, and, and we need to listen to them. But then there's probably more times than not that they're gonna keep you from doing things that there's no reason why you can't do or at least try. And so my philosophy has become pivot or start. Don't just not right? Um, don't just omit the thing altogether. Instead, think, well, what could I do instead? So what I had to, the thought process I had to work through, and I hope this is helpful to you guys, because this can apply to you whether you, you know, you wake up and you're feeling tired and run down, and you're like, I don't know if I should join Jocelyn for the class today. Maybe I need a rest day. Or maybe it's something just in life that you're like, maybe I shouldn't do this. So I think, okay, the original plan was 20 kilometers. Um, on the trail, which would have taken me about three hours, right? So I have a couple options. I could, what can I do 
that's going to still move me forward, right? What is, what is the best um, move to move forward, not backwards? So if I had gone and run, I would have broken myself down more than was going to benefit me, right? So that was another question. Um, could I hike? Could I go and hike and do 20, 20 kilometers? Could I hike? for three hours, the duration of when I was really planning to be out there anyways. And, or, or am I best served by completely taking a rest day? Well, I know <laughs> when we're older, um, and this was always the case when I was young, I could just take a rest day and everything would go, go away and be better. But it doesn't really work that way when we're older, um, when we're hurting, when we're inflamed, when we're, um, you know, injured, whatever, not moving is almost always worse than moving. So the trick is to figure out what kind of movement is actually going to not hurt you worse, right? And possibly even still move you towards your goals. And I've learned even from coaching athletes, I coach runners, um, and I just took on a new client who is just looking to improve her overall health and well-being. Um, and I, I coach them that there's a lot of alternatives to what was on the original plan that can still move us towards our goals. For example, let's say like worst case scenario, like absolute worst case scenario, you like you like break an ankle, you break a limb, and you literally cannot wait there, right? I did have a client twist an ankle really badly to the point where she she really she couldn't walk, she couldn't she couldn't do much of anything. What, so the question comes like, what can you do? She could do upper body, right? She could do core. And the one thing we can always do, no matter what, is we can focus on um, diet, like what we're consuming, what we're eating. We can focus on that, and we can also focus on um, self-care, right? How can I really, if I'm hurting, if I'm inflamed, if I'm run down, how can I really get this body to heal, right? And so yesterday it became about what can I do to train but not make it worse and accelerate the healing process. So I doubled up on my bio cell because <laughs> that's always the first place I go is, is my bio cell collagen. So I doubled up on that. I've been sucking back all the phytonutrients, um, drinking a ton of water and making sure that I'm eating really clean, like a lot of protein. So taking my protein amounts really seriously. Um, doing what I call fat days instead of carb days in terms of my diet, because I feel like the fat really helps. This could be totally in my head, you guys, I don't know. But I've noticed that my recovery goes better when you know I'm, I'm consuming, and it doesn't have to be a lot of fat. I'm not saying like I'm going to tell me to eat all the fats, I'm just reducing my carbs portions, right? If you want information on this, because this is a program I follow, a lot of you guys do this with me. Um, I increase my fat portions, decrease my carb portions, because I feel like the fats promote healing um, in a different way. They like lubricate your joints and your insides and all that good stuff, right? So that's kind of what I did yesterday. And then I, um, I hiked, I went for a hike on the trails and I thought if it, if it doesn't feel good, I'll stop. I got 20 kilometers in you guys, took me just over four hours. Um, it was really good for my brain because first of all, I tend to not think of hiking as training because I feel like it's walking and I can walk like, I, and this is totally a, this is totally a mental thing. And this is where I kind of speak to um, the world is I feel like we should be able to walk without limits, right? Like if your health and well-being is in a good place, walking should never feel like effort unless you're climbing a mountain. And that's different, right? Of course, that's going to feel like effort. But walking is a gimme. And so I always felt like I need to train my running, but walking should be kind of what I do when I can't run. 
right? And so I had this kind of mindset. It was so good for me to do that yesterday because the benefits of hiking for what I'm preparing for, which is going to be a whole crap ton of hiking involved, right? Like the first one to two days is probably going to be predominantly hiking at my race. Um, why I think that I don't need to train that, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it was really good. So sometimes the universe, like, it's like the universe handed me this lemon, so to speak, which is not part of the plan. Um, and I think that the choices that I made actually have set me on a path that's going to be better preparation and training than the path that I was on in the first place. Because now... <clears throat> I sort of have this newfound um, appreciation for the benefit of hiking and the, and the gains that I can make with hiking. I told my stuff back here, so we're going to do some stuff up. I promised you guys last week that we'll be doing a lot of stuff ups, and I, I meant it. <laughs> um, anyway, so now my goal is for each of those sporting blocks there's going to be a significant amount of hiking. Now the benefit to hiking versus running is your body recovers a lot better. Um, running, and this, that's why during the race I do so much hiking, because I know the more running I do, the more I'm going to basically deteriorate my body throughout the event. And I don't want to deteriorate my body prematurely, right? I'm going to be out there for probably five days, so... <laughs> I can deteriorate my body at the end of the five days. I don't want to deteriorate it at the beginning of five days. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to start with no weight for my first round. If you're a beginner, you're going to want to start with no weight for your first round and probably all your rounds. I'm going to test out my leg and see how these feel before I decide if I'm going to add weight to it. Okay, so we're going to do 10 step ups each, each side. Okay, so one, two, three. Four, five, oh my god, that is snowing. Six, it is not. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then the other side. I thought it was snowing as so my windows are really dirty and I was going up and down. I was like, no, no more snow. Three, four, five. Six, I'm just so ready for the trails to be dry and dirt. Two more, nine and 10. Okay, next up we're gonna do squats. Again, I'm doing this whole first round with no weights in the beginning just to test my leg. It feels pretty good. It feels not bad at all. If you are not hurt, <laughs> we're not gonna use the word. If you are not, um, you know, recovering, whatever you wanna call it, or like you can definitely use weights, okay? So 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, we're gonna do RDLs. These, these are what bother me, okay? So I'm gonna do no weights. And again, if you're not, working through something right now, go ahead and use weights. We're gonna, we call these in class shut the doors because basically you're gonna close the door behind you with your butt. So eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and Okay, and those do not feel good, so I will not be doing those anymore. All right, so we're going to go back to the beginning. I am going to grab a weight. Make sure you're drinking your water. Gallon water a day. I got a big hunk of lemon in my water always, but especially right now because lemon is going to help with inflammation. All right, let's just grab this guy for today. Okay, so we're going to go back and do 10 each side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 
two, and one. Okay, other side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and then into squats. One thing I'll say about step ups is I think they're one of the best things to do that's um, life relatable. Right, if you like to hike, if you like to walk, um, or just general fitness, they're just gonna really um, give you um, really relatable strength. That's not the right word, but that's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, last one. I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna go to sumo squats instead of those RDLs because honestly, you guys, the RDLs are not feeling good for me today. All right, so you can do your RDLs or you can do sumo squats, which you're gonna be driving those knees out over the toes like a plie. Three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, that's actually a lot better for, for my hip. The one thing I really like about plies is they're gonna help with hip mobility. That's what we're looking for today for me. <laughs> um, when you kind of tweaked your back, tweaked your hips, tweaked your glutes, um, hip flexors are, inflamed from maybe sitting for two day drive. Betty, you're gonna be doing that soon. Um, I think that was probably what the culprit was, is that I did a two day drive and then I jumped right back into training when I got back without doing any kind of, I should have done a strength workout first. Whenever I'm struggling with this, that's always the same area, but I have not struggled with this area in a long time. So it's like, no thank you. <laughs> Thought we were done with this. But anyway, we're gonna get it fixed. It's gonna be fine. Because I have wisdom now. Three, four, five, six. Also, I'm strong. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I believe I mean, it's unreal how much already it feels better from two days ago. And I go see my massage therapist today. I have no doubt that he'll fix me up. I'll take it easy the next couple days. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The good, the good thing is, Really? The other thing it trains is I'm used to moving at a certain pace and that can really get in your head. One, two, when you're not moving at the pace that you think you should be, you're moving a lot slower. It can be really demoralizing out on the trail. Five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten okay a little rest for a second and then we'll go to sewer squats so and and it's it's great to have it with me mentally in past races where um you know you lose sight of the fact that you have tons of time to finish and all you see is how your your task at hand is not going the way you thought Right, and how often does that shut us down in goals? Like, you want to lose weight, and it's not coming off in, in the time you thought it was, and so you just throw in the towel, right? Or, you know, you're, you want to, whatever it is in life, we do that all the time, we give up, simply because 
that's four. The time it takes to achieve something is longer than what, what we thought it was going to be, and so we just we just give up, right? We all do it, and to learn how to commit your will to a goal, and what that means is when you commit your will to a goal, it's I am achieving this no matter what. I, I posted a quote this morning that I really like, and it had something to do with, um, you know, you do it anyway. It's, you know, you're afraid, you do it anyway, and you tackle the obstacles as they come, right? You don't try to pre-tackle the obstacles because you don't know what they are, and then the ones that you weren't prepared for throw you off your game, right? I've learned that's taken me many years, many failures, so many failures, you guys, to realize that it doesn't matter how long it takes to get there as long as you get there. I'm saying this out loud, and I'm thinking inside, you know what, this applies directly to a business goal I have right now. That I'm like, eh, never mind, I'm going to move on to a different goal because it's not happening in the time period I wanted it to. Well, no. Recommit to the goal and alter the, the plan. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. I guess we're doing four sets. <laughs> uh, I meant to do three sets. That's okay. A four set's good for us. Four, sorry. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two and one. All right. On to on to squats. Last set of squats. Last set of sumos. Um. And so, anyways, back to the story I was telling you guys about yesterday, my training day. That's the thing. I had to learn patience. Okay, it's gonna take longer than I thought. It's gonna be. You know, it's not gonna look like what I thought. But I still got it done. I was so proud of myself yesterday. At the end of that 20K, when that, when that watch clicked 20K yesterday. One, two, I, I, I did what I set out to do. It looks different. Five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. It looked different. It took longer, but it got done. And in my race, that's exactly what's going to happen over and over and over again. Things are going to look different than I planned. Inevitably, nothing goes to plan on these things. Um, in fact, the last one I did, I've only done two. The last one I did, I really didn't have much in the way of plans because it was the first year for the event, so I couldn't really analyze it or, or over prepared for it. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And it went really well. Um, better than expected because I don't really have any expectations. So I kept exceeding what I thought because I didn't really I wasn't really stuck on anything, right? Now this one I'm going in hoping to do that again. It's probably going to be a shit show, quite frankly. It's probably I'm kind of preparing my brain for it to be a lot of things that I'm not expecting. Especially because the first two did go so well. We're going to do step ups again, but we're going to actually step up and down off the bench. Very much like we're climbing. Okay, so... One, two, this is good for hill climbing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then we're going to do the other side. Um, ten. Nine, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So anyway, so the lesson here in the message here today is learn to commit to the goal, learn to commit to the end result and be flexible and open to pivoting on the journey there because it's not going to go how you think. Okay, we're going to do lunges. Um, we start with no weight. So eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, next one we're gonna use weights. Okay, ready, other side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and that's what I do. This is why I actually have bare feet, guys. In case you're wondering why I never wear shoes, it's to strengthen my feet. Um, this theory. A couple of years ago, I got this really nice pair, like beautiful pair of slippers for Christmas. Uggs. They were Ugg slippers. My daughter says it's Ugg mom, not Uggs. <laughs> Ugg slippers for Christmas. Oh, and they just made me feel so bougie. <laughs> so I wore them all of the time. But they're 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 quite well supported, like they're they're sort of up. And I had this theory that they actually maybe atrophied my feet. Here's the thing: if you're always in really supportive shoes, I worked in a shoe store for a long time, you guys, and so I know this to be true. Half the problem that we have with our feet in our world today is that we wear such sports shoes or our feet actually weaken over time because we, we just, we don't strengthen them. Two, three, four. I've never had foot problems before. Six, seven, eight, <coughs> nine, and 10. And then all of a sudden I'm having all these foot problems. And so I stopped wearing them around the house. I do wear my Crocs a lot. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. But I work out in bare feet now. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's like for, for a long time, Going barefoot was, it was not a big deal, right? Barefoot is barefoot. It's not, not, nothing, you know, I could do it or not do it. But then also one day you're like, you haven't done it so long, you can't do it anymore. <laughs> and so I wanted to go back to practicing that. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, other side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two and one. And so I have noticed that my feet do feel better, aren't quite as fussy, and so that's why I like to work them. Now, if you if you've had foot problems, I know Betty, you had foot problems when I met you, but I think it's gone now. You don't want to just go and stress your feet, so you want to do it little by little, but uh, actually, Heather, who joins classes sometimes, she had plantar fasciitis when I met her, and we 
worked gradually weaning her out of her orthotics and strengthening her feet. So, you know, one of the things you can do is just practice standing on one foot, right? <clears throat> and close your eyes. Now, I couldn't do this. Like, I couldn't do that a couple years ago. Um, so my balance has gotten better. I work on those accessory muscles. We're gonna do that today, actually. I work on all that stuff because you take that for granted when you're young and then all of a sudden one day you're like, I can't do stuff. I can't walk down the stairs. I mean, I joke about walking down the stairs, but it's true. I couldn't walk down the stairs without holding the railing. Um, whoops. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hit the other side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. Okay, now we're going to go to our lunges. Copenhagen's today. Um, not looking forward to these, but these are something I need to be doing as much as step up leading up to this event for the reason that, and they're hard to do in bare feet, let me tell you. The Copenhagen's are going to increase the strength in these muscles right here. Now, I'm going to try the hard ones today. We'll see how they go. Sometimes when you've tweak something, you're not really sure where the actual problem is. So sometimes doing all these things is just to help figure out where. Um, but we're going to do, I'm going to give you a couple options. So option number one, if you're a beginner, you're not going to want to do Copenhagen's because they're an advanced move. You're going to come into side plank like so. Okay? If you are feeling like strong and you want to try Copenhagen's with your knee bent, you're going to do your mic like this. Okay, this is the beginner version. And then the advanced version is you're going to have your legs straight. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to try for 30 seconds on each side three times. All right, ready, going. Half of this I find is getting my shoulder in the right spot. But the good news is this does not bother my fussy spot. Although it's really hard. <laughs> it's bothering me in a lot of other ways, but not, not in the spot that I was worried about. Okay, so we get eight more seconds. Four, three, two, last one. Okay. We're gonna turn around to the other side. We're gonna alternate sides. Um, and what we're going to do in the middle is we're going to do 10 push-ups, okay? I'm going to add some, because you guys know, I'll do my push-ups right now. Um, I've done 40 so far this morning. The goal is to get to 100. Yesterday, I took, I did nothing other than my 20K height, and I did some, a lot of mobility and stretching and rolling and that kind of stuff.
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. Okay. In between, we're going to do our 10 push ups. So, push ups again, if you're new, you can do them on the step, right? You can have your hands on the step. You can do them against a wall if you're brand new and you're just, they are hard. Push ups are hard. Um, if you are kind of making your way through the ranks, so to speak, you can do them from your knees or you can do full ones, which I'm going to do. So, we're going to do 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. My nails are a freaking mess and I cannot wait to get them done. I think for my race, I'm gonna get them this color. <laughs> what do you guys think? Right now they're like this color. I love these two colors together. Maybe I'll get the two colors mixed. I'm not really a mixed colors type of person, but I want to do something really bold and fun for my race um, that I wouldn't normally do in real life. All right, ready? Okay, going. This is round two. We're aiming for three rounds of these. These are so, so, so good for our pelvic floor, our inner thighs, um, you know, stabilizing those hips. Like, working on getting stronger core and hips because that's really the root of most of our problems is a weak core and weak hips and dormant glutes. So in these classes, we do a lot of work on that stuff because that's honestly what makes us fall apart in our midlife years is our lack of glute strength and core strength, right? And then a lot of stuff we do, I choose to help with range of motion in the hips as well. I, I honestly think if you if you are um, used to feeling tight and stiff in the morning, do 10 air squats. Like 10 air squats if you've been sitting at your desk for a long time. 10 air squats if you've been sitting watching TV for a couple hours. Like to me, the air squats are one of the best ways to promote range of motion. Uh, when I my hip was being fussy the other day. That's what I did. I did some squats to loosen it up. Okay, that's round two. Okay, we're going to do 10 more push-ups. Okay, that gets me to, that'll give me to 60 push-ups so far. The goal is 100 every day. Guys, i got to be strong for this thing. I keep remembering that is the biggest thing that I can do. I can't train for the heat. I can't train for the desert. Two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can't train for the terrain. Apparently the terrain is really rugged. Okay, I can't train for that. I don't have that here. I can't train for the rocks. I can't train for the sun, like being in the hot blazing sun for the whole day, other than maybe I might go hiking on the road one day just to be in the sun. Um, I can't train for... The distance, really, is in a lot of ways, it's about, you can, so all I can do, and this is, this goes for life, you guys, all you can do is train to be strong, so that when those unexpected adversities or challenges come at you, you know, regardless of what they are, sometimes they're like life stuff, right, like relationships, like parents, like illnesses, um, work, right, sometimes it's that stuff. Sometimes it's injury or it is, it's illness again. It's, um, you know, you, we can't, but if we can, we, if we can put in a little bit of time every day to, to building our mental strength and our physical strength, right? <clears throat> the Calm the Chaos Challenge, you know, that's what that's all about is building your mental resilience, your mental, um, having control over your mind, right? Like being in charge of your mind because when you're, when I'm not doing that, when I'm not putting in a little bit of time each morning into being the leader of my mind, then my mind is the leader of me, and my mind runs rampant like weeds. Our, our minds, when somebody's not, it's like leaving a wild and holy terror toddler in charge um, that is not capable 
of necessarily leading in the way that we want them to, right? We, we have to help them. We have to be in charge. We have to show them the way. That's how our mind is, I think of it. And so if we're not putting that time into strengthen our mind and strengthen our body, then when challenge and adversity come into our life, which they will, because we cannot not have that, um, we're at least equipped, right? We're at least, we have, you know, this little hiccup in my head. I'm making it sound a lot worse than this. It's not a big deal, but it's just something I haven't um, tackled in a while. Like, I know that my body is really, really strong. I know my muscles are really, really strong. So I know that I can get through this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because I'm strong and I'm really healthy. All right, and that is about a wrap today, guys. Um, we're gonna finish with a core hollow to, to to wind this up, right? Because core hollows, again, are one of my favorites right now. That is the other thing is right now, no matter what, I gotta have a strong core. Because let me tell you, I had a break in March from carrying that pack. I took my pack to Florida and I had plans to carry it, but I did not. And it is heavy. <laughs> like carrying, I gotta carry four, uh, my goal is actually to be able to carry five liters of water for that first section. It's heavy. My shoulders and my upper back are like tense. And you guys, I'm, I'm strong. I consider myself really strong. So core strength, when you're carrying all of that weight on your back, and let me tell you, like, that is a symbolism for life if I've never heard one. Or if I've ever heard one. Okay. Ready? We're going to hold core hollow for 30. Holding. So make sure that back is pressed into the ground. And you want to be up. Um, on your glutes as much as possible, holding and breathing through. We're going to do two of these today. We've got 12 seconds left. Now you can make this easier by bringing your hands here, and you can also bring your legs up like this, so just to give you guys a couple options and resting. Okay, so a couple, so and come out of it whenever you need to, just hold it as best you can. Um, I had a new client start classes last night, um, and I could not tell her enough times, take it easy, take it at your pace, take breaks whenever you need to. You just got to keep showing up. If you keep showing up, I promise you in a month, two months, you will not even recognize yourself, right? Because the fitness comes fast. If you show up, if you stop showing up, you just say it was so hard, I can't go back. Um, you never change, right? Each time you go, it gets a little bit better. She was a very, very much a beginner, but I know that if she keeps showing up, she signed on with me for a month. Um, my goal is to get her to the end of the month where she's ready to keep going for the next month, right? Five more seconds, four, three, two, one, the biggest thing is, you gotta put your ego aside, because it's the ego that shuts us down. You gotta put your ego aside and be willing to accept that, hey, I am not where I wanna be. I am not, you know, I should never have gotten here in the first place. You gotta put all that aside and you gotta say, what I'm doing is I'm gonna put in a drop in the bucket each day, a drop in the bucket. Every time you put that drop in the bucket, you get a little bit closer, right? And before you know it, your, drop, your bucket's full. So um, on that note, I hope to see you guys again tomorrow to put another drop in your bucket. Have an awesome Tuesday.